Mm -hmm. So with us now, Republican Senator Tom Cotton out of Arkansas, member of the Senate Armed Services mm -hmm. Committee. And, sir, it's good to see you. Good to After see you. After all Thank this you. time, yeah, good morning to you. Yeah, you're, good to see you in person. You'll be in the chamber tonight for the State of the Union Address, and um, uh, we'll see what the president has to say. Your assessment of Vladimir Putin and his intentions now are what? As you wake up on this day. Well, Vladimir Putin, for 20 years, has wanted to reassemble the Russian Empire. He's had that imperialist ambition uh, since he took office. I think what he's seen over the last six months is a perception of weakness and opportunity. Uh, he saw our withdrawal from Afghanistan. He began building up these troops on the border of Ukraine just a few weeks later. Uh, he also saw a long series of one-sided concessions that President Biden gave to him. And I believe that's why he calculated that he could go for the jugular now in Ukraine, which is what he's always wanted to do. Um, all credit here goes to the brave men and women in Ukraine who are fighting back against his army, not just their armed forces, but the moms and kids making Molotov cocktails or the grandmas and grandfathers who are going out to get a case. This is more than Putin bargained for. And every day they've been able to fight off his war machine is another day that they have emboldened Western leaders to impose sanctions, to send weapons, to help them in this fight. But we have to do more. What I hope President Biden will do tonight is announce that we'll have no more half measures on sanctions. You know, they say they've sanctioned 80 percent of the banks in Russia. Unfortunately, Vladimir Putin controls 100 percent of the banks. So he can move money around. He can use the other non-sanctioned bank. And we still haven't sanctioned their energy sector at all. We we have sent tens of millions of dollars to Vladimir Putin's war machine in just the six days of this war buying his oil. Europe has sent even more. We can impose even more punishing sanctions on him if we will also reverse our terrible energy policies at home here. There's time to do more to support these brave Ukrainians as they fight for their own freedom. So you've been, you've been in State of the Union addresses before, and usually this is a time when the President of the United States can tout his accomplishments. and. You'll get a standing ovation sometimes from just one side of the aisle. But in this case, it's very interesting because two of the accomplishments that they think they would like to talk about, one, they talk about the economy in terms of jobs, numbers, and things like that. But inflation, partly because of the American Rescue Plan and because of their energy policies, are driving some of the problems that you see in these reflected in these poll numbers from multiple polls this week, having them in the mid-30s on approval. Yeah, and also very low approval numbers on uh, his performance with Ukraine, whether we've been tough enough on Vladimir Putin. Um, that's why I say it's time to reverse course here. If gas was still at $2.10 a gallon, not at $3.60 a gallon, we would have a lot more freedom of action to stand up to Vladimir Putin. There are more things that we can continue to do, and that's what he should be announcing tonight. But what's the likelihood that you get some sort of reversal on these policies? I mean, given what we've seen from the administration in the last few days, it doesn't seem likely. I mean, you see them continuing to double down on tenets of the Green New Deal. Um, while they're also taking steps to continue to reduce our nuclear power sources. You know, just last week they reversed a permit that would extend the life of a nuclear power plant in Florida. That's the exact opposite we should be doing. In addition to opening up federal lands for new leases, as they put a new moratorium on just last week in the middle of this war, we should be building more nuclear power plants here. We should be building them in Europe as well. These we should be might, taking these urgent might steps. all be great ideas, but in, in, unless you do it, and unless Zelensky waves the white flag, this country before our eyes will be reduced to rubble, well, just like Grozny and Chechny in the late 1990s. Well, I don't think Volodymyr Zelensky is going to wave the white flag, and I know the Ukrainian people will not wave the white flag. That's why it's that we have to start moving at the speed of war to help them. You know, the Biden administration is still not sharing intelligence fast enough with the Ukrainians to help them target Russians. What's and why the hold up on that? I think the Biden administration uh, constantly is worried about provocations and escalation. You know, why didn't we send all these javelins and stingers four months ago, Dana, when we first started to see that build up on Ukraine's border? They were worried that it would be provocative, that it might induce Vladimir Putin to invade Ukraine. Well, how does that look right now? Uh, when you consider um, the European commitment over the past couple of days, more javelins, you know, from the Baltic states and various countries and RPGs from Germany, et cetera, I, I mean, you're a military man. How difficult is that to get into the theater of battle once the battle has already started? A lot of it already is there, um, but uh, that gets used very rapidly. Uh, it's been great to see the European countries step up. I mean, when you have Luxembourg mm -hmm. and Belgium supplying weapons to your enemy, you've made a mad miscalculation, and that's what Vladimir 
Vladimir Putin has done. However, Russia has thousands of tanks and hundreds of aircraft, so we need to continue that flow. That means we also need to increase our own defense spending here at home because a lot of the weapons we're using to supply Ukraine are weapons that our army would use or that we might supply to Taiwan with to deter China. And unfortunately, again, the Biden administration is not coming forward with enough money to continue to fund our military at higher levels or to fund it at higher levels in the future. I hope we hear more about that tonight. Unfortunately, I'm doubtful we will. All right. Well, we'll look forward to your analysis post-speech. Thanks for being here today. Thank you, sir.